This is a podcast about just opinions. Hey, yo, this is what it is. This is what I think. We all have kind of outlandish takes. Like, don't at me. If there's other free form stuff that comes with it, we cover that too. Hey, hold on real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Pause. Well, it is Tuesday, November 5th. And it's been close to about a week, um, six days, since Houston fans got their hearts crushed by the Nats. Now, me, I don't care. You know, I'm a Yankees fan. Don't at me as to why. Whatever. I just like the Yankees growing up as a kid. Whatever. I I was kind of indifferent. Obviously sad. I want the the city of Houston to thrive, to win, to succeed. I wish they won, but I'm not, like, beat up about it. You are an Astros fan. Yeah. You were not, not on site, but, like, you watched right within the city, game six and game seven, which last two games they lost the opportunity to put it away yeah. at home. Weren't able. You know what? I will say this. Um, Houston a great city, bro. Yeah. Like, we win or lose, we still have fun. Like, I like game six when we lost. Like I was out at um, I was actually well, I was at one plate. I was at home plate, which is well, it's not even called home plate anymore. But it's like literally a like not it's across the street from Minute Maid, yeah, or whatever, right there at where home. Whatever plate is. that one's called, yeah. Yeah, I was right there, standing there out there with a bunch of fucking people. It was all great. It was devastating and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, it was cool. After that, I walked down a few blocks um, to Bain Street, and that shit was... I went to Molly's, Molly's Pub. Shout out Molly's. It's a nice place to go. I don't know if you've ever been there before. Low-key, dive But, yeah, it's... Yeah, dive bar. It's an Irish pub. It's cool as fuck. You know, like, not very many people go in there, but, like, when people are in there, they're, like, people that, like, you know, like me and you, like, just cool-ass people. You know what I'm saying? You can, like... You could be friendly with anybody there and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not like weird. It's not like creepy shit. But um, yeah. So like that night had fun, man. Like um, uh, after the game, shit, met some people that like I've known before or whatever. You know, through like passing, like from being there and type shit. Man, we just sat there. We sung some Southside classics out on the corner. Smoked some weed and shit. Like randomly, just like on the corner. These, like, random people were coming up to that. We talked shit to this, like, little kid and his dad because uh, they had, like, a uh, Nat shit hey, on. but they got the last laugh, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck them They got the up. last laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, but it was all in good fun. Like, the, you know, that's, like, I guess the the point of it, man. Like, it, we had fun. And the game seven actually um, was actually even kind of funner. I actually watched the whole game there. Um, like, and it wasn't very many people in the bar. Or whatnot. Um, I mean, especially for a game seven that's like four blocks away from, you know what I'm saying, where it's being played or whatever. But it was a nice group of people. Um, it was a weird series. I mean, obviously, was, like, man. the it, home team was 0 7. That's the big thing. For me, watching it, I was like, there's no way the Astros are going to lose because you're not going to have 0 7 for the home team right. in the World Series. And yet, you did. And yet, and people yes, are did. pissed about A.J. Hinch not playing Garrett Cole, which, okay, for one, he was on short rest, so I get, like, okay, I understand why you don't want to put a big onus on him because, hey, if he goes in there and he gets shellacked, I mean, the storyline... I a free line, agent, though. I wouldn't give a shit. Well, not <laughs> that. No, no, not worried about his, his injury. I'm thinking, like, if you're on short rest, or not thinking that he would get injured. If you're on short rest, though, you might not be as effective. Right. So, imagine if he goes in and he gets shellacked. People say, oh, well, two and a half days rest. Like, what? Uh, you know that's what gonna, people are going to say. Now, there yeah. are some other decisions that he made. I think he pulled Granky way too soon in Game 7. I don't think – I think he in – That game was seven, the biggest no, problem. No, 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 no. In Game 7, actually, it wasn't Granky to me. It was he should – instead of um, Osuna – Playing the fucking uh, they, pitch he in played the eighth, him too much too. Yeah, pitch in the eighth. They should have put fucking Smith in. They should have put Joe Smith in to close the fucking eighth and the ninth. Maybe so, but even he got hit a little bit. But I don't think that was a problem. I think the guy that got the loss and now his name's escaping me is it is it Miller? He just looked terrified. He was the guy that gave up a uh, home run in Game Six. Now I'm forgetting his name. He gave the go ahead home run um, to Howie Kendrick. 
He threw five pitches, gave a... I, Fuck how he cares. Yo, he got tattoos like a white girl. Yo, yeah. look at his tattoos, nah. bro. Look at his tattoos, bro. He has like an anchor. I will say shit. this though. Like a I have bird. mad, I have mad respect for the Nationals, though. Not only because of oh their journey, but they're a group of just like so. Zimmerman's been there for how long? Howie Kendrick, thirty six, played for the Angels, a couple other teams. Um, Soto, the young kid stepping on the scene. Rendon, hey, that's a Houston guy right there. I think I went, went to high school. Yeah, with Lamar. Yeah. So, I mean, it was cool. I respected for that. Strasburg, hey, the hype. I, I like whenever hype actually pans out. He came in with all this hype about, oh, he'll be an all-time pitcher, and he wins the World World Series MVP. So I, I like seeing him get that. I like Strasburg. I don't think he should have got the MVP, though. We was oh, hitting off that nigga, man. I, man, there were every opportunity. We were smacking off of there him, There was bro. every opportunity for the Astros to put it away in game six, and what was it, game... Uh, was it game two that he pitched or game one? I think it was game game one. He pitched game one and game two. Nah, it's impossible. You never started to do that. Nah, he didn't do. He didn't pitch. You sure? One. Trust me, that didn't happen. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I know for a fact he pitched game one. I think so. I'm oh. pretty sure. I don't know. He he pitched pretty well, but I think that the fucking um, MVP should have went to uh, either Rendon or uh, Eaton did well too. Soto. Soto did well, but Soto had like a little bit of a cold streak there for a while. Right. Um. Now, I think it definitely should have went the Rendon. He was on fire, but like a little bit of time between like five and seven, he slowed down a little bit. And then at the end of seven, obviously, he picked well, it I mean, back everybody up. got their good days, bad days. Like, if the Astros would have won, yeah. I thought Bregman would have got it. He had his like off, you know what I'm saying? I don't know who would have won it, honestly. Maybe I think, I think, Bre- I think, no, nah, nah, I think Bregman would have got it. But he had such a bad batting series, though, in the World Series. He had good saves. He saved a few. If he would, like, if they would have done something in game six, game seven, I think I don't he would have been the one. That. I, I think, uh, and that, and I guess that's part of the problem. That's part of why they lost. Nobody can knock anybody in with runners in scoring position. Right. How many people were left on base? There were like ten, I think, in Game Six or Game Seven. Yeah, alone. We, left, we left a lot of runs. And the reason why a lot, a lot of this of is just kind of like anecdotal. Again, I'm a Yankees fan, so I only like kind of passively watched. I right. watched bits and pieces here and there. Um, this isn't a sports podcast. This is just a Don't Add Us podcast. The reason we talked about this is I know you're hurting from it, but I know that it kind of created some opportunity for you. No, I had, like I said, I had, I had fun. Um, like, so game seven night, that was, um, that was the night before Halloween? Yeah, the okay. 30th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's there a were actually people started. out. Yeah, there were people out, like, you know what I'm saying, all dressed up and shit like that. But immediately after the game, like, uh, they, like, changed the channel. They turned into AMC. And, like, one of my favorite movies from childhood was on Halloween H2O. Oh, yeah. Great fucking movie. You know what I'm saying? It's actually it's really so trash. It's so, like, it's fucking, 98. Yeah. It, it's, it's so 98. Yo, that Scream era of shit, bro, that changed, like, movies. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, like, so we're watching fucking uh, H2O and shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Fucking Michael Myers. Like, that, that's some shit that'll get me in the mood. And we were going into Halloween, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the, we were, like, in that witching hour. You know what yep. I'm saying? It's like 11 o'clock hour or whatever. So it's like, oh, all right. Well, you know, this night is actually Best pretty holiday. Cool. Um, So me and my boy Corey, we started playing a uh, pool. You know what I'm saying? These guys came up. Like, as soon as we were about to start the game, like, right after we get the quarters. Because right before that, this like, we had, like, no money. Because he had got, like, robbed the night before or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a whole a, other yeah. story. Huh? Yeah. He got robbed like the night before, or whatever. Uh, and then like me, I just didn't. I didn't have any like cash or whatever. I had like my card, but I didn't have like any cash, so I like didn't want to spend any like money. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yeah, eh, I don't want to. You know, it's like fuck it, we lost. You know, like what am I spending money for? But we wanted to play pool. We were outside like smoking a, a blunt or whatever, and some guy that he had went to the game by himself. He actually he said he went to the Yankee series. He went to a game in the Bronx. And um, he went to to this series or whatever, and he didn't pay his fucking mortgage or something or his house note or some shit like that. Yeah, he was like, my my wife's gonna be so mad at me, you know. Like, I'm sorry if I'm doing an accent or whatever, but that's how he sounded. He's like, my wife's gonna be so mad at me. He's like, can I hit that? And we were like, we were like, yeah, dude, it, it's cool or whatever. He's like, hey man, it's all good, man. I'll, he's like, I'll give you guys something, you know what I'm saying? Like. But let me hit it. And I was like, all right. This nigga gave us like $12. <laughs> I was like, bet. He only hit it like twice. Like, it went in a rotation like twice. You know what I'm saying? We let him kill it. He gave me like $12. So I was like, 
bet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Me and Corey, like, Corey broke ass, but got knocked out of $500 the night before. He didn't get to work that day because of, um, he actually works at Minimate or whatever. He's one of the beer dudes. And um, so, like, he didn't get to work, so he was out of there. We sat from the game. We got, like, the sweat. I was like, oh, shit, we can play some pool. So we go, we get our quarters. I buy him a beer and shit after $12, buy myself a beer. We go, and then, like, people start following in because, you know what I'm saying, like, that's where people go after the games. They go to Main Street, nice little dive bars or whatever. This one big-ass dude comes in and, like, with his boy and shit. Like, I, I don't know if they were at the game or whatever, but they come in, and he's like, oh, you, you put six quarters down. He's like, you guys, you know what I'm saying, like, we got next, you know, uh, or, like, you know, you guys want to play us, you know? And we're like, all right, bet. This dude was like a fucking pool shark or some shit. Of course. Because this nigga, like... If they're ran, carrying quarters, of bro, course. He, like, ran the fucking table. So he beat us twice because, like, he... he, One dude, like, another group of people came and, like, put the quarters down. It's like, hey, we got next, like, during the first game. But he had already called next. Like, they had put their quarters down. So, because we were playing off of our quarters type shit. So, anyway, long story short, the guy beats us. I go to the next day. I am start talking to, like, some, like, people that are just, like, at the bar and shit, like... People are mad friendly and like um I see like this girl's like mad cute, like cute look, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like she was just cute, like kinda in her own world, like dancing to like the like punk music and shit that was like on. And I was like, yo, that's your jam, huh? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like just that's how I like that was the first thing I said to her. She was like, Yeah, she's like, I didn't play it or whatever, but like we started talking, like from literally from that's your jam. You know, like I'm actually talk kinda talking shit, you know what I'm saying, in a way. But, like, you know, like, that opened up, the, it broke the ice, you know what I'm saying? And, like, it wasn't even like I was trying to shoot at her or anything like that, but I ended up getting, like, a Insta, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, she liked my sweatshirt, this is the shirt that I have on, like, right now. She was like, and I was like, yo, I made this type shit. She was like, yo, I was like, yo, I'm about to, like, do more batch because I found my um, my thumb drive or whatever with, like, there all my go. designs and shit. So I was like, yo, I'm going to start, you know, like, doing a new batch of shit, especially now that, you know, we got the pod and shit, too. Uh, I feel like a lot of times, just like you, just have to go start a conversation. Whether your goal is, in your case, single guy, yeah. meet you know opposite sex, talk to her. It wasn't even trying. I was literally asking yeah. her like because she was like jamming the fuck out. Like I, mean, I was like, that's your jam, you know? Because it was like some random ass. Like you just have pour to, yeah. some sugar on me. Hey, it was some dope. shit like that. That song is dope, though. Maybe <laughs> that's where my inner whiteness out. comes out. But that song is thrown. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it's just a matter of, like, okay, I'm going to actually talk. But that was a win for the night. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, in, in, in a little bit of way. Well, I think part of that's the culture, too, though. Like, you said Houston, everybody's kind of going with the flow. We're all in it together. It's but a very I, tight I group. I didn't expect, you know what I'm saying, like, to get a potential, you know what I'm saying, like, courting of somewhat. Or even, even, like, a friend, like, you know, like, in the future or whatever. Or even just, like, a nobody. But, like, you know, like... The way I approached her, like, I, it wasn't even an approach. It was just like a... Yeah, you're just making conversation. Like, I was just making well, conversation. And, I guess that's and the, like, not even trying to, though. I guess that's the difference, Like, too. if she was just like, yeah, like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's cool. Well, I think there's a couple of things to that. I guess the difference is, like, you're going to succeed. I feel like people respond more to people, to others, when they're just their most genuine version. Right. And you're your most genuine version when you're not... Going in like with, with a the game plan, yeah. You don't have like a rehearsed, you know, approach or like a punchline. It's not Again, like middle school is like, I'm gonna go get her. I'm gonna say <laughs> this now. Nah, I'm gonna say, do I want to say, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. get her for you. Well, like you said, you didn't even go in with like that as the goal. Yeah, you're that just wasn't yourself at that all wasn't times. The goal. I was literally just asking her a question because she was like kind of tripping me out. Yeah, like, and, you know? and that like if you're if you're just like trying to make friends somewhere, right. Have that conversation if you're trying to pro- uh, approach the opposite sex. First of all, just be the most you genuine should, brand of yourself. You possible. should always approach the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever you like, with the intention of a friendship or even an acquaintance. You should always network. Yeah, like always, like no matter what it is, because like you, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Like, and that's in all facets, of whether it's work fucking you know your hobbies whatever the fuck you know it may be like you know your friends or whatever you know like it's always kind of like it goes back to like who you know like there's nepotism in everything you know what i'm saying and then like 
Some's good, some's bad, but mostly it's good. It's like, yo, let me help this person. I know that they're a good person, even if I don't know them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That one interaction with them, it's like, oh, that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like... Well, I think a lot of it is people go into interactions with a lot of, you know, first impressions, or they go with these preconceived notions where it's like, hey... I already know what this person's about. I haven't met them, but hey, that doesn't matter. I know what they're all about. Right. That's that's the bad approach. I think the the right approach is let me go in with an open version of myself, as open as you're willing to be. I'm mm-hmm. not saying be as open as like somebody like myself who like it's always cards up. Um, that's just like the best way to interact. And then you go in without any expectations. Right. That's the thing. I think. And then if you go in without any expectations. It all like whatever you get will always exceed that because your expectations are like zero. Yeah, you know what well, I'm saying. So whether, whatever the outcome is, I think I feel like going in with expectations are always an issue. Like even not not even from, um, not even from like a relational standpoint. Even if it's just like, hey, I'm at this bar. I'm gonna go up to this person. I'm gonna say this. Even if it is just like like another guy that you just want to have sports talk with, right? right. I don't go in expecting a response because if you don't get that response, you're gonna get pissed off. There's gonna be some kind of an issue. There's gonna be, you know, I think that's how like sensitive people start these altercations. They go into a conversation with an expectation, or somebody mm-hmm. might approach them with a conversation and there's an expectation, and then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, somebody in the car next to us is having sex. <laughs> oh shit! Get this shit, dude. Ooh, what if it's like, yeah. Yo, speaking of relationship, hey, man, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Just pick them up, you know? So, but, uh, no, and that kind of goes back to when we were at um <clears throat> at a friend of ours' birthday at, uh, at, Grand, at, you know, Grand Prize or whatnot. Like, it was a simple conversation like that was like, oh, shit, oh, you went to this school? Oh, okay, I knew this so-and-so person. And, like, yo, I met a fucking, like, friend friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, someone that, like, I'm, like, real cool with. Well, like, know? expectations cause a lot of problems. Even, like, not even, like... Oh, see, me- like, that but, night, I, no expectations. Right. And they were and all that's why it was, exceeded. <laughs> that's why it was a win. In the best way. Yeah. That's why it was a win. But, like, even when you go into, like, watching a movie or listening to music, when you go in with expectations, yeah. you set yourself up for failure. Like, like, with Kanye, I have to level my expectations now. And I'll say this, like... I like Jesus is King. I liked Yay. I, I really, I, I would say if I had to rank. Like, I liked what Yay, was, Jesus is King was trash. There's only two good songs. If I was like, what is Kanye's worst album? I'd say probably Pablo. Even that I thought was okay. But the thing is, you go in like, oh, Kanye's the best. I'm expecting something amazing. Now I feel like he's just putting stuff out for himself, which Bro, is fine. The but music's like, amazing. The content, yeah. Well, here's the problem. It's I don't like that. I don't the, care about rich people problems, bro. I, this one wasn't about that at no, all. No, no, I'm just, I'm just ranting. I'm sorry. But the the reason why, I, like, you know, he had all these great albums, and then my favorite was 808s and Heartbreak. That might be an unpopular opinion, but a lot of people find his magnum opus was My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. That was a long double CD, whatever. Next one was Jesus, which is like a drastic change. New sound, but it was also a much shorter album, and that spawned like all these new albums that he's putting out are short. Every song feels like a snippet. It mm-hmm. doesn't feel like the full song. All the way going back to Pablo, none of his songs feel like a full length song. Every single one feels like a snippet. That's my problem with the new stuff that he puts out. The last album was twenty seven minutes. We listen to that shit on the drive to where we're at right now. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I will say I, I like the sound. I liked uh, Sella. I like On God. Like, there's a lot of songs in there that I like that I'll listen to, but there aren't like very many that I would just play on repeat. I'm not gonna listen to Jesus Is King until I hate it, like I would any other album. You know, like mm-hmm. popular mm-hmm. music. You know, whatever I listen to. I think ultimately, where I'm kind of upset, I'm like, come on, Kanye, just put out like a full album. I want a full album again. I want a story. That those are my favorite kind of albums. Like a real album. Like, yeah. Like how albums are supposed to be. Like how, how he, he got used to with put him like out. college dropout and late registration. Like there was a, a story there, a yep. narrative. And I think that's what. Okay, first of all, the music game is so saturated right now. Like it, it's just there's mixtape artists 
that were putting out albums. And they were putting out mixtapes and saying that they're albums. And, like, that's kind of where the disconnect... And, like, our, our, attention span, our attention spans are shorter. So, like, that's obviously... That feeds into, you know what I'm saying, why we're getting these shorter albums and shit like that. You know, like, because everyone's album is, like, 35 minutes tops nowadays. Like, from, like, the few past albums I've listened to, I'm not going to name them or anything like that, but they've been short as shit. And I've been like, yo, that's that's not an album. It's an EP. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, what the fuck is going on? The attention on? span thing plays a big part in nah, what music it does. is now. Because it's, like, a bunch of hooks that you play over and over. You can have it rolling in the club. People are dancing and shit. You know, looking back on, like, my favorite uh, Snoop, Tupac, Wu-Tang... All these songs would play the chorus like once, and it was like two minutes in. And I'm like, all right, I want to hear more of the chorus because that's what I'm used to with modern day music. But honestly, it makes the chorus that much more special. That makes me start a song over. When I hear the chorus, I'm like, I want to hear that shit again. I'll start it over. And that's how old music used to be, where it was just like, you wouldn't get all the choruses. Now it's a two and a half minute song with the chorus playing four times. You know what's funny? What I thought about going back to Jesus is King. Uh, the closed on Sunday shit. Uh, remember when that nigga was like feeling better than some head on a Sunday afternoon? <laughs> yeah, we made you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like now he's closed on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. <laughs> no, but you know that is kind of signified, and like that, I guess that signifies growth. Yeah, and I think a lot of what Kanye's albums are that he's a, a Gemini. A lot of that shit is introspective. Like, let me tell my story. And that's what we liked, you know, we, we all listened because it was like, oh, this is cool, you know, this is kind of relatable, it's a college dude trying to find his way, and then, you know, it's dealing with like, you know, MAGA hats, and you know, I'm doing my own thing. Yo, you, and, you know what? And, you know, um, whatever his thing is, but but it's like we're following him along for even, his journey. It's not even, I don't even think it's doing his own thing. I think he does, like, Kanye's like the original troll, bro. <laughs> like... So you think all he's right. just coming up with all, like, making no, the shit like, up as he goes? No, uh, like, now that I think about it, literally his entire career, that, like, you know, he's, like, been the rapper Kanye, like, he's been doing this shit. Think about this shit. The pink polos and the fucking, you know, like, the, the wasp culture mm-hmm. type shit. He made that shit cool. Bro, before Kanye came out, I would wear, like, kind of, like, tighter polos or whatnot. Right. My shirt was young. It was some shit. But when Kanye did that shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, everybody started dressing like that. It's like, yo, what the fuck? Y'all started jacking off me. You know what I mean? Like, y'all used to talk down on me. You know what I'm saying? I can wearing credit, though. He's good. Fucking ice creams and shit like that. He's great at setting a trend. Because he, like, like we just talked about, listen to Jesus is King on the way over here. We just talked about, if you were to print out a transcript. Of his lyrics? You would laugh. Oh, yeah. You're like, man, this shit's silly. But the way he says it, his delivery, the beat that he puts it to, the way it fits into, like, the story that he does, and knowing his history and, like, his 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 discography as a whole, it's like, oh, shit, man, I see where he's at. He's evolved. He's evolved, you know? Uh, and, and that's the thing, like, music today, you really don't have that so much. Yeah. I mean... You you don't because but everybody's like younger now you know what I'm saying yeah. like we we don't really have like outside of like Jay Z or someone like that and that was somebody when you know what I'm saying he was already he was at where Kanye is now when we were in fucking like 15 years ago you know what I'm saying with a black album and shit like that so I mean the growth in music like our our artists that we really care about like they're either not growing or they're kind of like going backwards you know what i mean like i think um like i never really been a fan of j cole until he came out with kod you know what i mean and kod is a very conscious album or whatever but it's kind of more of my like it, i i relate to it more than like the you know the song about losing the virginity and shit like that i thought that shit was lame you know what i'm saying <laughs> but it, it works for somebody though, it, it does you know? like and i understood i understood that shit when i heard kld i was like okay like he's speaking to me now right. you know what i mean like whether it's on the user side or the dealer side he's speaking you know what i mean like you don't know well i think that's that's kind of indicative of the times we're in now where like so much 
because our generation, not even our generation, our society, even even older people, you know, even Gen X the now, we're, everybody's a little bit more selfish. Everybody wants a little bit more uh, attention. And social media kind of stirs that up, which we'll talk about next episode. But it, it's, it's all about me, 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 me. And I think that's kind of like... You, you see, like, niches develop because it's like, oh, this is so hyper-targeted that it's about me, you know? Now you have, like, a Netflix and, like, a Disney Plus and all these different things are kind of breaking off doing their own thing. I feel like we're very much in an era right now where, like, specializing in something is becoming kind of, like, the move. Mm-hmm. But it's ebbs and flows because next thing you know, what's going to happen? There's going to be Disney Plus, Netflix, da da da, da. All these things. you still going to be paying $120 go, a fucking Exactly. <laughs> Let me get it. You know what? I wish there was one place that had all the channels. <gasps> Cable. Nigga, like, yeah. Yeah, TV, you know nigga, what I mean? Like, what? It's, it's, it's all ebbs and flows. And just like with music, it's like, People make something that is very super like niche and like this is all about my audience, and then they become like a little well, bit see, more mainstream well, and it's I more broad and it reaches all audiences, and then you know then I it's think the that's, ebb and flow. I, that's, they go right that's back Kanye. to Kanye. That's Kanye, bro. Because look, when Kanye came out, I think it used out, to be though. No, it's ebbs and flows. Like Kanye is still that person for everybody though. Like because Kanye, I think he's just gotten so much like Kanye made credibility. Hip-hop. But he's got Popular so much credibility. Popular to where it's the most, you know, it's hip-hop where it is today. Yeah. I think it's just people trust, like, oh, if Kanye's doing it, that that's that's cool. He's a trustable nigga. Yeah. He's, like, he's got our, he's earned our trust. That's because, why he won the 50 Cent Kanye yeah. battle back in, like, 2007, and I was, 2008. I'm glad you brought that up because I was talking about, I was talking about Gene it with somebody, like, two days G-Unit. ago. Gene it. What? We. <laughs> I used to listen to it all the time. Hell yeah, you was a fucking G unit, like yeah, Stan, nigga. I was, I Dear was. Dear fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually did write him a letter, but I always kind of <laughs> said I should. But the reason G unit. Dear yeah, yo. <laughs> here's some tips on how to improve. Nah. Um, <laughs> the reason G unit faded is because we went from a time where like gangster rap and beef rap and all that kind of stuff, that kind of became old. Like, in like 06 when he was like oh that's when it was going on for 10 years yeah it was going on for 10 15 years now, almost now had G Unit 50 Cent and G Unit as a whole come out 10 years before man I feel like they'd be they'd be more iconic I don't think they would have been like I think they would have been like some niggas like Onyx or some shit I no like you win the game too mm, I don't think so I, cause him. 50 came out so aggressive he kind of demanded everybody's attention but and like his music, like is catchy. He's he's got a good he's a good vocalist for like chorus. You know, like nobody can deny, deny that he's an all timer when it comes to like singing a hook, rapping a hook. Fifty's mm-hmm. like right up there, and he had like a nice group. And the mixtapes really set it apart because you know they're they're rapping over other samples. Right. Like they weren't the first people to do that, right. but like they were at least one of the first people they in were, the limelight to do it. Yeah. Like, like uh, niggas with major deals. Mainstream, like, yeah. yeah. They're the first mainstream people to do that shit. Because, like, nobody else in the mainstream would do that. At right. least not that prevalently. Like, not that... I mean, they had a G unit radio right. every couple months. You know what I mean? They was on all this internet shit, man, early. Hey, they were... This is 50. Yeah. This is 50.com. You know, honestly, he kind of, like, put World Star on after, Damn like, and Joe Budden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because 50 was doing, like, this is 50.com was kind of like a World Star back in, like, Yeah, what? it was. 06, 06 yeah. 07 and then it kind of like he would start feeding world star stuff into it and that kind of gave birth to like world star I'm not saying he started it but you know nah, what I mean? like Q, was, Q from Queens he was ahead of it he was Q ahead of the times right, bro you just think Q probably was that video nigga that 50 put on 50 literally probably birthed the Ro- world star like literally I will say this though I want more from Queens. tapes I just want more they people they gotta in come general. back well, like, like the GDM, streaming I think the streaming shit is fucking us up yeah yeah. Streaming shit Bro because we're not As passionate about the, Bro remember about The albums that you bought Yeah Like those were in, Instant classics to you yeah. Because you went And you bought them well, You used to stay In the fucking Target Or the Soundwaves Wherever yeah. you got Your records and shit from And listen to them shits In the headphones Like at least Like you know Like you Snipping it yourself But yeah. you listen Because you have to Buy that shit You have I to spend like- 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 dollars I wish I wish G Unit would bring mixtapes back so people are like, 
because they've tried putting some albums out like in the last couple of years and just falls flat. But I, I would hope that that would like start people doing them again. Because like you said, like streaming throws shit off, mixtapes are more off the cuff. They're just being. I feel like that's where the creative juices flow because you're not looking to appease stakeholders and album they'll, sales. They'll be back. They'll be back once we once we get out the mobile stew. They'll be back. We need to. Uh, we need to just goof around and do some mixtapes. Nah, straight up. I've been telling people that like, I'm just written, gonna do an all freestyle. We've written before. I'm gonna throw some well, your shit be freestyle. My shit be written out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I engineer that shit though. <laughs> I love I love mixtapes though, you. and like I like so much of the music that I would listen to, back in, I don't know, back in like '06 all the way to like 2010 was just mixtapes, random. That shit. was the mixtape era. But if you look now, the reason why I think vinyls are making a comeback because people like us that like stories, it's almost like They're buying a buy movie. Them. It's like buying a DVD. It's buying like I'm buying this book. You know, it's like a twenty dollar thing that you can listen to for an hour and and. The vinyls that I buy are the ones that are stories. I have Good Kid, Mad City. I have um, a couple of different Kanye ones, 808s, of course. You know, ones that are more connected. Damn, Con- you know, Kendrick. Damn, I got a lot of Kendrick. I got a lot of older shit. I got MF Doom. You know, like ones that I feel like they all had the same sound and feel to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, I mean, I mean, they all have the exact same sound now. I feel like, but it's like a different, it's not like, same, similar sound in the same spectrum. Nowadays, it's all the exact same sound, or it's just like I'm tired of these niggas fucking crying on their songs, you know. And using like Travis Scott type beats, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of that shit, man. Like y'all gotta get creative. Like I would, I would rather hear boom bap and lyrics. Like nowadays, like spit from a new kid, from some kid that's fucking 16 or some shit. Show me some new shit. Stop whining over a fucking track. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Show me some like, I don't know that you can really like. Well, and that's yeah, the because, evolution though. Because, but that's the, the evolution. Is, that's kind some of what of those kids, started, right? Some of those kids, they're actually very lyrical. Yeah. But they just choose to like deliver it in an auto tune type shit. You well, know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's what people are demanding. So I think really it's like more of a. I understand it. We need. We just, just need the listeners just to old, be. I'm all over here. We just need the listeners to be choosier. I think that's the thing. It kind of comes full circle. We're like, attention span is minimal. We're trying a bunch of new things. We're listening to a bunch of new shit. Like, whatever. Let me just hear everything. We're not really, like, giving it, like, that critical listen. Where it's mm-hmm. like, this that, isn't my thing. It's because of the streaming shit, bro. Yeah. Like, look. Here's a perfect example Supply of how shit, how shit used to work. 20 years ago. Literally. 20 years ago, I borrowed a CD from you. Do you remember what CD that was? Which one? I borrowed a CD from you. Which one? It was Limp Bizkit's Significant Other. I borrowed it from you. Like, you let me keep it for, like, three days or some shit. I went and bought that shit by the time I had to, like, give it back to you. Yeah. I had my own copy because Limp I was like, Biscuit. yo, like, <laughs> this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, I fucks with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. But it was a different way to. Put I had to on. go to a store. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you have to give it to me to, to, so I could give it a critical listen. I had to listen to it enough times where I was like, "Yo, am I gonna spend? I'm ten. You know what I'm saying? Am I gonna spend the fucking twenty dollars that I get like a month? You know what I'm saying? On this shit, like at least half of it. It was just a very different process. Yeah. But like, it, you put me on to like, and I still like that's a classic album to me. Same thing with uh, Chocolate Starfish, Hot Dog, you know what I'm saying? Eminem, Slim Shady LP. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that type of shit, we were putting each other on because we used to have fucking big ass, like, little uh, binders of CDs. Yeah. And, like, we would just trade off our CDs. And it's like, eh, okay, I'm not fucking with this. So it's not it's not like that shit's still in my phone. I don't know. You probably might be more good about it. But if once I add some shit into my library, it don't leave. Well, I my think phone. so much of, like, the promotion, so much of, you like... A quick one off, didn't he? <laughs> so much of the promotion, so much of, like, the entire campaigning now is so social media driven. It's like, here's the album. We're going to use social media to brand, sell oh, it, yeah, yada, yada, yada. But no. before, like, like, think of 50. When, when the massacre came out, it was oh, just... Oh, the rollout? It's such a different way of promoting it because remember you he promoted made, it over like three months. Well, and he made the and you have to worry about like, leaks and DVD all that shit. like 
PSP. I remember they, he made that. Yeah. He made a video for every track on the massacre. Every single one. There was like 18 tracks, mm-hmm. 19 tracks on there. Great he made a video album. for everyone. That was a great album. I don't care what people say. The massacre was. Yo, dope. that album was great. That I literally had it for free on bootleg, like the legit album or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it was just like you know ripped or whatever. Right. And then I went and bought it. Sometimes, yeah, you got to. Sometimes, like, if it's a if it's an artist... And it wasn't even for, like, support or anything like that. I, I didn't understand that type of shit back then. It was like, nah, I need the real thing. You know what I'm saying? Like Collection. Like, yeah. You're, like, collecting it. Exactly. Because then, and even now, some, like, even with vinyls, that's, that's another reason why I do have love for Kanye, too, though, because he puts the detail into everything. Like, his vinyls... My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy has, like, an insert. And I think it actually has... Technically four, to where it's like a, a, a gold. Yeah, it's like a gold. It's paper, but it's like gold uh, bordered. Um, oh, like a like a like a square. Frame it's almost like an shit. Instagram post. Yeah. You know, it's like a square photo, and you could slide that in. And on the on the red cover of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, there's a little square in the center, mm-hmm. and that's gonna show whatever whatever you want showing in front of the album. Is what it shows. So there's the one where it's the crown on his head with the sword in his head. There's also the one where the ballerina is dancing. Mm. They have all those different ones. So, like, okay, I could just put this in and out. Right. And, like, for some people, that's a little too much detail. They don't pay attention to that. For somebody like me, I love that. Because it's, like, all the little things that go into, like, this entire project. You know, they put out this entire artistic it's diorama. It's like linear notes. It's a Remember diorama. when linear notes start to die out? Like in the CDs, it was like mid two thousands and shit. Mm-hmm. Remember how great it was to get the CD and look through the book. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like that was great. That was Even in cassettes, it. like the, how they used to roll out type yeah. shit. Like you'd get the long like, and then they at one point it was just like three folds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like uh, that's it's nothing. Just, just track list and uh, yeah. produced it. Well, that's the other part of it. So, um, within that album, it also came with like the CD, which. It's actually in my old car. It was the only CD I owned at the time. Oh, back you left it in there? This was like two, three years Bro, ago. I bet you somebody like bought that shit. I know. And it, like, cause I remember, damn, it was some like car that I had. It had a CD in that yep. bitch still. I was like, oh man. I bought the, the vinyl for 808s and Heartbreak. Damn, that's the only CD that I had at that time. This was two, three years ago. I just put it in because I'm like, this is gonna be in there full time. That's my somebody favorite bought album. Your shit was like, oh shit. My favorite album of all time, 808s and Heartbreak. That and Good Kid, Mad City are like a one A and one B, right? That's in there, and somebody's listening to that shit. But the cool thing that came. Man, with it, remember two weeks ago? You know what the fuck your favorite album of all time was? I knew what the album was. I don't know the song. Okay. Album I know because it's a collection. It's right. a, like like kind of like right. we talked about putting out like putting people on songs. I feel like it's more like listen to this playlist. Future project. Well, now we'll talk na- about nowadays it is like it's more playlist driven. Yeah. See, because people like, like how you like say compo- people are like, in mood. It's like an art. It's like everybody's their own curator multimedia. now. Yeah. Everyone's their own music curator now. That's why things are like going from you know what I'm saying, like more playlists. That's why Spotify is a billion dollar company. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, but what's cool about Spotify is they're actually tailoring Spotify to be more podcasting. Do you I know do that? like that. Well, yeah, because they bought a couple podcasts. Yep. Um, Shout out Joe Budden. Shout out Spotify. We're on Spotify. But, yeah. I mean, music, I just... I wish it would go more back to, like, this is a full-on art project where, you know, the tour has all the production and the crazy shit. Like, I feel like Travis Scott and Kanye do that to the nines still. You know, I like that you could buy a vinyl and you pull out, like, it comes with a poster. Just like back in the 90s Mm -hmm. where you pin a poster in your room you know, I got the man cave study, whatever right. you want to call it, where I'm posting all these album, you know, posters that came with the vinyls. Last poster MF I Doom. put up was a Ariana Grande poster. I don't was, blame you. But it was from a, a Reebok, like, ad type shit that she did. I stole from Foot Locker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, oh, that's, that's, I don't blame you on that. <laughs> <laughs> movies, too, because movies used to be, they'd come out. And they would promote them months and months and months in advance. I mean, that's just an entirely no, different rabbit hole. Yo, movies are super trash nowadays. Did we already talk about this? We've talked about it several movies times. Movies are super just garbage All nowadays. the talent is in shows now, which I don't like. I, I like my movies. I like I like having a good movie. Shows you make more money, bro. 
Yeah. For the talent, I get it. I'm not hating. I mean, if you're making 100000 to whatever the fuck, some people making up upwards millions. to a million dollars an episode, bro. Come on. Like, wh- where are you going to go? But I think maybe it's a me thing where I'm more drawn to, like, these compilations. I don't see how people can spend $250 million on a movie. That's, like, probably... I, I'm, don't fuck If you sell this, a billion... But that's, like... But you're not selling a billion. MCU. MCU will do that, you know? Thanks, China. Avatar. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm, well, that I mean, they were hitting those numbers before it even reached out there, though. Not billions, but you know what I mean. I mean, okay, see, that's a different, like, that's, that's a different anomaly, bro. If you got a, you got a whole universe, you got Marvel, Disney behind you, like, spend, you can spend, they can spend that money. Yeah. But I mean, like, there's some shit, bro, that they spend 200 to 300 million dollars on, and it's so, fucking garbage. They don't make the money back. They lose. Here's what, here's what I will say, though. So, like, what is that money can you go? think of, like, some MCU movies you don't like? I'm sure you can think of plenty. MCU movies There's so that many I don't them. like? So many movies um, in general. All right. I, I'll give you a short list of MCU movies that I do like. Okay. Maybe this is more of a me question, because I'm, I'm trying to make a grander point. But yeah, I like the Avengers. I liked uh, Black Panther. I liked uh, I, I liked uh, Captain America. Like, all Captain Americas. Um, Those were underrated. The I liked Iron Man. Uh, all Iron Man's are I really like the first one. It's because... Cause the villains. Because you, you, you don't like fucking... Uh, what's his name? DJ. Was it Terrence Howard. That's why you don't fuck with it. No, that's the only one I do like, actually. <laughs> no, I uh, I just didn't like the villains the other one. I guess the point I'm making is... If I'm watching some MCU movies... If I, if I want to watch... Like, if I just want to watch one standalone, I'll watch one just standalone. But a lot of time, I'm like, I want to watch the full story. So I might watch several of the movies... Kind of the same with, like, if I listen... I have a tendency to listen to, like, albums at a time. Or I'll listen to, like, an artist within one disc at a time. Um, and I think it comes back to curating. You said we're all just curators. What is it? I mean, think about also, like, BuzzFeed and, you know, different sites like that that are just, like, top X list, whatever. What is it about us as humans with that, lists? like... List, whether it's curated playlists on music... Whether it's watching a TV show, binge watching it, whether it's you know listening to an album in its entirety. Nowadays, we could we can tailor shit to our liking, so that's just what it is. You know what I mean? But what is it about the organization of it being in a list that's appealing? Like we're in a because time, we, we, in, a time in the where meme we, era, think we about all this, think though. we're like the same. So we well, like we we'll go to a BuzzFeed article and we're like, point, oh, okay, though. let me see if they're like. If their shit, like say it's like top ten horror movies or some shit like that, just to be like, oh okay, let's see how close their shit is to my shit. Yeah, I think that's part of it. But the funny thing is, like, we're in a time now where like, and we don't want to has... agree. We don't want to agree. So well, we just want to. The point, the reason why I bring that up is, we're in a time now where like nobody has free time. None of us do. We're like, I don't have time for that. I, think we I don't have, have too much that. free time. Probably. Mo- well, we say we don't have time, free time. We probably have way more than we say. But the point I'm making is. In a time where we all have no free time, that's when we're consuming more of something in like a playlist in a, in a curated cluster of content versus like just listening to like. You know why we don't have free time? Because we're not free. We're fucking. We're, we're attached black to this mirror, shit. The black yeah, mirror. Yeah, we're attached to the black mirror shit, bro. No, black mirror. That's just like a, that phone means screen. a screen. Yeah, it's a phone screen. Now like, we know, we know. I don't right. know if everybody else knows that, but that's what it is. But we're attached. That's why we don't have. That's why people say they don't have. Free, that's why it seems like everyone's you so busy. yourself. Because we're imprisoned in our you know, own mind. The funny thing is, there is so much power. I I would say in the last two years, I've said yes to most yes no questions. Like I've I've agreed to do way more things. Mm-hmm. Than in the past. In the past, probably said no a lot, but like, you know, whatever. Yeah, you say no a lot. I used to, no right? Man. Now I'm a yes man. Not, not like. Nah, you, you are more of a yes man. Not like in the bad way. Not like, like yes oh man. yes sir. But like, like you're down, you're down, down for do it. But you know what I've started doing more is I've started saying no again lately, uh-huh. and it's very liberating. Oh no, it I is. feel like you just need to understand. You need to define what you're willing you to do, what you're one, not. Well, I'm not like preaching like, hey. I'm trying to tell you what to do, but I think that, like, you can really l- create more free time, make yourself feel less stressed out, more liberated, 
if you can define, okay, what are things that I like to do? I'm going to say yes to that. What are some things that like is just a waste of time? I'm not going to do that. I think you have to really feel like you have to really weigh out your options. You have to val- you have to place a value on your time. Yeah. How much it, don't be afraid to say no to things you don't want to do. I, I I say no to shit all the time now. It's like, "Hey, this is the thing that I nah, used nah. to say no yes to <laughs> because I feel like I had to." Now, I guess let, here, let me let me let me summarize it simply. I feel like you should say yes or no. Answer that question with how you truly feel. Oh, I feel like oh, really? so often that people. I think everyone should live their truth. Yeah, well, and so like many start people acting say like it. Yes, because they feel like oh, I feel kind of obligated, obligated to say yes, Bruh, or like I'm saying on. no because I don't want to do this. Like I don't feel like I should. It's like say yes to things that get you out of your comfort zone because you grow. We just talked about that. Mm-hmm. Say no to shit you don't want to do. If you don't want to do it, just say no. You're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. And if you do, and give the so real what? reason of why you don't, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, look, man, I don't want to spend my weekend doing that. You know, I work all week. I try to get a good weekend, do whatever I want. I don't want to spend my weekend doing that. I have way more respect for people telling me no. Uh huh. RSVP no than say, like, I ah, will see, or like, yes, and then you, you didn't. Right. I would much rather know up front, like, nah, I'm going to RSVP no. I guess that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. So, I think a lot of, like, what music is today, a lot of what movies, it's, we're making what people want to see versus, like, I just want to tell my story. And that's why I like Kanye, because he'll do what he wants to do. He'll say right. what he wants to say. That's his expression. All I want is more. That's what I'm saying. I just want more. But I just at the more. same time with Kanye, I also think he's pandering. I do. Mm. He panders. Like, his... Okay, not with his music. With his, like... Like, his rollouts. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Jimmy Kimmel shit. Like, uh... You know what I mean? Like, the... um, I don't know, uh... I don't know if you saw this shit on Twitter, but, like, uh... DJ... Uh, I mean, DTJ. Donald Trump Jr. DJ TJ. DJ TJ fucking, um... Like, was tweeted, like, oh, Kanye's, like, the best. Or I don't know. It was, like, some, like, shit. Like, I could, I could pull it up right now and tell you verbatim. But he's, like. Could you listen? Could you see that fool listening to We Major? No, nigga. No, <laughs> not at all. Like, nigga, you just, like, I feel like Kanye's pandering to that. And, like, they're eating that shit up. Part of it, though, I can relate to. And I'm not, like, the biggest astrology person. But I do feel like, as I've gotten older, I've, I've put way more... Um, I guess stock in like the little things. Uh-huh. So like, I mean, think about it this way: like, if you find a stray dog that has been abused and it's pregnant, a lot of the time that carries over to the spawn. Like the the puppies might be a little skittish, right? And you're kind of like, why is this dog naturally so skittish? Why does this and, nigga tweet so much? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's a different story. But I mean, think about it with like a lot of like dogs you get from breeders. I, I feel like some of them tend to be kind of skittish. Maybe like. The, the mom is in, like, well, these like, weird they grow conditions. Up in fucking yeah. cages and shit. Right. Nigga. So, like, they have this skittish tendency. So, while I don't necessarily... I don't think, like, oh, what's your sign? We're, like, we're meant to be... I do feel like, in different societies, based on, like, how... I, I, I see how my mood differs so much, season to season, month to month. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I feel like I thrive now. Winter is my shit. I love the winter, right? I'm happier in general in the winter. So I feel like if I was a woman, pregnant, happier in the winter, by the time like I had the kid, like the kid's gonna have a certain demeanor potentially, right? Oh, I'm I'm for shit show agree with that shit. So that's why it's not even necessarily like the stars and like oh I think because no, you well, know this constellation lines up this way. What I think is like. Okay, people have a tendency if they're pregnant in the summers, having kids in the spring, you know, whatever reason. Like, I feel like there's correlations there. So I do feel like if you're born within the same month, but, months, we might have some similar traits. Our upbringing might differ. Right, right, you know, right. our your pregnant mom was different, obviously, very much from, from my pregnant mom. But there were some things that they were experiencing at the same time. So to a certain degree, I do feel like, okay, cool, tendencies. I guess where I'm going with that is... The Kanye thing, him being a Gemini and always kind of trying to find out, like, who am I? Like, having this, like, identity crisis, which I think is, like, just something that's symptomatic of, like, our 
society right now in general. Mm-hmm. But me also being a Gemini, I'm also very much, what, who am I? What am I doing? You know, so like when he's coming out here like, Jesus is king. This is what I'm about now. Church. Because that's, he believes <laughs> that. I, so I don't necessarily agree that he's pandering. I think for him, he thinks this is what he has to do right now. But it might change. Anybody that knows me, you know me, you know, Jamal and I were talking about this today. I have a tendency of, like, I want to try new things all the time. Right. And look that's at what Kanye. Kanye does with his albums. Yeah. With each of his albums. All the time. They're all different. And, Not one think, album sounds the same. Again. I even mean, between, like, even, I mean, for me, my mag- magnum opus for him is either college dropout or late registration. Me, more towards late registration just because I feel like it has actually more music on it. I do have late that is the most. That's the most slept on album. I don't I don't think anybody I think it's the best. That. I, I literally think it's the I best. I don't think it's the that's best. That's peak Kanye. But I will say it's the most slept on. That's I will agree with Kanye. you. That's, I, I feel like people sleep on that album all the time. I think that's the one that really brought, brought Kanye across the board. To where second, everyone loved him. So second albums... I sophomore like, album? Sophomore album. So usually, like, people... There's a term in the industry uh, called sophomore slump. Usually yeah. people fall off on their second album. But if you don't have that sophomore slump, you usually it's have a great... It's such a pivotal time. You usually have a great career. Well, I think the first one is what puts you on the scene. Right, obviously. The second one is, like... Okay, now that you're, everybody's paying attention, what are you going to do? But I think it a depends lot of on the conform. type of artist, too. A lot of people conform, and I think that's why people get mad. I think, like, f- people felt that 50 conformed because well, Candy people, Shop, well, you well, know. Get Rich or Die Trying wasn't his debut album. Power well, of the Dollar was. And, that's what, and so he literally, Get I Rich or Die Trying was yeah. his second album. It was the one that took so him I to guess, the top. I guess the, the differentiator there is, like, if we're talking literally, then it's a different story. For me, it feels like sophomore. Oh, mainstream, mainstream for shit look, show. Get Rich or Die Trying was his, his right. Well, debut. even even I even look at like Travis Scott. His first mm-hmm. album was Rodeo, right? Right. Trash. But to me, it was no. Nah, I, I I I love Rodeo. To me, days before days before should have been a fucking album. Yeah. But to me, that Days was before is way better. That than was the first. I I do agree with it. I don't know if it's it, it's better, but it's different. His shit is always different. But Ooh. I I still look at Days Before as like his first album, even though it was a mixtape. She's the pawn star girl. Ah, uh, <laughs> from the valley. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Rodeo, rodeo yeah, had hits, man. Rodeo was good. But I mean, I I don't know for some reason. Okay, so the reason why I think that Days Before was better than Rodeo. Was because I felt days before was kind of more experimental. Yeah, and like rodeo, dark. it was it like dark. it felt like he he thought that he found he the sound. The he he thought that he found it the sound that everyone liked from uh, days before, but it really wasn't that shit. I can't wait because to... days before, if you listen to days before and then you listen to Astro, you're like, oh shit, these like actually connect kind of more. To me, like the music wise, like is like it's um, I don't, it's more, like, not inclusive. Is it, it's more broad. Like both of those, the mixtape, days before rodeo, okay, and I motherfucking see what you mean by that. it, like the music. You know what I'm saying? It's more broad. Like the it's, albums it, themselves. It's not all varied. super dark. It's not all like. Cause you got like. Astro Thunder is kind of like, man, I'm in my shit right now. What the hell am I doing? Then you got Sick of Mo. It's like, I'm drunk on a Friday night with my boys. I'm going to jump around. <laughs> then you like got Can't distant. Say. Can't Say. You just slump. No, hey, see, like, I don't know you why. Just I get crunk to this. I mean, I get crunk, but it's like that slump crunk where you're like, it's, it's, it's kickback I'm gonna song. I'm going to hear that shit right now. Well, when we pull out of here, we're listening to Rodeo. But the point I'm making is. <laughs> no. <laughs> the <Days> point. Before. <laughs> It is a days before vibe. Me, don't you try and then, me. <laughs> look, we came back. First episode, what did we talk about? I said music is all about moods. Yeah. I can't rank his albums. I really can't. I can't rank really, like, different that, artists I can. I, okay, I count but Days Before as an album. I do, so too. I say I do too. Days Before, Astro, then fucking Rodeo. I pro- and yeah, I probably, put, I probably put it like that. But Rodeo, though, was really good. Just like I wouldn't say Late Registration is Kanye's best. Me, personally... But I feel like it's the most underappreciated. Rodeo to me is the most underappreciated. Dude, like no, you late even registration. To rodeo. Like no, I have, I have actually. Like I, I have, but like it didn't. 
Like, I didn't give it that many listens. Well, that's and that's the thing, too. If you had listened to it while it was out... Yeah, I think I have a different opinion. Because for, when I look back, it's like, oh, this is like the 15, 16, like, feel to it, you know? And that's why, for me, and probably somewhat for you, mm-hmm. Days Before was special because 2014 was, like, the year. Yeah. That was just, like, a, a good year. So much... Like, it, it, all, it all comes back 25. to the first episode. Yeah. You, like, we really felt grown, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's when you really start feeling grown, you yeah. know? Yeah. I you, feel you, like we could probably have an entire podcast dedicated to, like, weird shit that people do when they're 25. Ex- specifically 25 years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that'll happen yeah. to... That'll have to come at another time. That's all I've got for today, man. I don't know. Hey, man, me too, man. Hey, this was a good one, though. I... Didn't know. Damn, fifty five minutes. Fuck. Hey, it goes quick. It Bro, goes quickly. So, it, hey, we do the damn thing. Subscribe, follow, whatever you gotta do with wherever you listen to podcasts. I say that because look, Spotify, you technically follow a, a podcast. Apple Podcasts, subscribe. Please do that, and then follow us on Twitter. Rate at, us at podcast at me. Rate us. Yes, five stars if you like what you hear. If you don't like what you hear, don't tweet us, us first. If you don't like what you hear, tweet us first, all right? And then we'll tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Join the conversation. We want to hear y'all's nah, feedback. We, we want you guys to engage with us, like, for real. Like, because that's the whole point of this shit. We also have a Gmail account, so I'm going to introduce that, of course, as, you know, send us some questions, thoughts, any kind of takes, your opinions. It's podcast at me at gmail.com. Again, you know... Don't at me was already taken, so, you know, whatever. Podcast at me. Let us know what you think. Join the conversation, and we'll talk to y'all soon. Peace. Right, peace out. Hey, hold on real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Pause.